It's a good morning to you. Welcome to Asaki Online. My name is Zenzel Ndevele and this is The Breakfast Club, a show where we talk about everything. And today we are in Gwanda. I know a lot of you always talk about the solar project in Gwanda. So we are here at your 5 million uh, solar project or your 100 and something million uh, solar project. This is where the solar project is, uh, is supposed to be happening or is happening. You know that there's been a lot of uh, you know, court cases going on, but as far as we are concerned, uh, or as far as you know, so far, five million was uh, paid uh, for what you see here. And uh, after the Supreme Court ruling, this project is supposed to be starting, but uh, so far, there's nothing that is happening now. So the Portfolio Committee on Energy uh, is here to try and find answers uh, from Zesa on what is going on. And maybe we need to place it on record that the contractor himself, uh, Intratrek or Chivayo, were not here. So the, the, the people were answering questions uh, were, 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 were Zesa people. So we'll take you through to what happened here, what the MPs asked and what happened. And of course, one interesting thing was that uh, Zesa is now owned or the main shareholder that Zesa is now the Mutapa Fund. So the Mutapa Fund as the stakeholder, as the main shareholder, was their approach to this. So this has been going on since 2015. And yeah, we can tell that nothing is happening. So in this program, we are talking about the Gwanda Solar Project that was awarded to Intratech. And uh, since 2015, they've been back and forth on this project. You see, was supposed to give us a report, but uh, it's important that we put on record certain things. Number one, ZPC has a contract with their contract. Number two, we brought ZPC as part of ZESA to parliament for oral evidence. The impression that we got from the oral evidence is this is a running project. So ordinarily a running project, the contractor should be here. Like everywhere else we went, we spoke to ZESA, and Zesa made it a point that all stakeholders are here. Unless there are special circumstances that you tell us in, the, in your presentation, it was our expectation that the contractor was supposed to be here. That's why the members are not very happy, because that was the expectation. Ordinarily, when you have a running project, this site belongs to the contractor, and the contractor should be running the project. So ordinarily, you should be here. So I think we'll give you time to give a presentation. Members of Parliament, take note, we'll get our chance to get clarity seeking questions. Good morning, uh, honorable members of Parliament. Um, uh, I'm Nobed Matarute. I'm the acting managing director for Zimbabwe Power Company, one of the subsidiaries of uh, Zesa Holdings. Uh, we met, some of you we met at Kariba. My apologies, I couldn't make it yesterday to <clears throat> to attend uh, at Sherwood, but I was adequately represented by my colleagues here. Uh, we are at the proposed site for the 100 megawatt solar PV power plant, which we are going to do jointly with the contractor uh, Intratech. Um, I've got uh, colleagues with me. Uh, Mr. Tunga uh, Chinengo is our, our legal <laughs> representative. Then engineer Forbes Chanakira there, you can raise your hand. He is our project and technical director acting. Then we have engineer Mavondo there, our operation director acting. So they will help me to uh, make a presentation so that you can have a, an appreciation of when this project started, the challenges that we experienced, and uh, the way forward in terms of overcoming those challenges that it affected the project. Uh, before we get a presentation uh, from uh, Engineer Chanakira there, I may want my colleague here to react briefly to the sentiments expressed by the Chairman of, uh, of the Portfolio Committee as regards the issue around uh, the absence of the contractor at this particular meeting. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, MD, and uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, of the committee for the concerns raised um, by honorable members here. Um, just to clarify, uh, and in addition to what the MD articulated earlier on, that when the request came, we counter-proposed that perhaps it would be more appropriate 
uh, for, for the committee to extend uh, the invitation directly to the contractor on the basis of the summoning powers which you referred to. But in res with respect to the contract between the parties, we thought it would be important to place on record that the nature of the contract we have is an EPC contract, which is two-staged. The first stage is that there are certain conditions precedent that must be satisfied before the contractor can mobilize on site. So currently, we do acknowledge and confirm the position that the contract is valid and in effect in accordance with the Supreme Court judgment. But in terms of mobilizing to site, the conditions that are necessary for the contractor to mobilize to site have not yet been achieved. And to that extent, a notice to mobilize to site has not yet been issued. So that explains the reason why you find uh, perhaps the contractor is not on site and there are no works uh, which are actually ongoing. So it's more of a legal and contractual issue uh, that, that explains that. Um, but I'm happy that you earlier on advised that um, you can still rely on your summoning powers as a committee to invite the contractor either back to this site or even to parliament to answer to issues which may be raised by the committee. Uh, those are my submissions, Chairman. I can confirm the initial mobilization um, in or around 2016 was for the purposes of pre-commencement works. So this explains why there was uh, the, the activity that probably uh, honorable members will see. But I can also confirm that in 2018, particularly on the 23rd of April, when the contract was terminated, it was accompanied by an order for eviction from the site. And that explains why it then demobilized from the site. So now in order to facilitate remobilization to site, we now still need to comply with the provisions of the contract, uh, satisfaction <coughs> of the conditions thereof, which will then allow for remobilization. Uh, good morning once again to you, honorable members. Our apologies that uh, we have uh, we are going to do this presentation while standing. It's uh, obviously because of uh, the absence of facilities at this point for us to be able to do a presentation under the shed. But regardless, allow me at this juncture to walk you through a presentation regarding the Gwanda solar uh, project. Uh, my presentation outline uh, proceeds as follows. Uh, item one will give background on the, uh, uh, the historical background on the project. And then I'll also proceed to give a summary of the pre-commencement scope of works, the status of the pre-commencement works, and the key milestones that have been achieved to date. And then I'll conclude with a way forward. In terms of the historical background uh, summary, the Gwanda Solar Power Project was awarded to Intratech Zimbabwe and their technical partner, Chint Electric, uh, on the 23rd of October 2015 at a project contract value of 172,848,000. Uh, uh, under this EPC contract, there was need for the contractor uh, to conduct pre-commencement work. Uh, which was according to a schedule which was within the contract. By pre-commencement work, we are saying we are carrying out work prior to the actual contract becoming uh, commencing. So what, why we do this is because in most cases, it takes time for us to be able to reach what we call financial closure, which finances are critical for us to be able to implement a project. So prior to that, we say we don't want to then wait when the funds become available. So we then set out to say, look, let's do that which will delay us when we finally get the money. So the pre-commencement works are these works that we see here today. I will pr proceed with my presentation to articulate further on the same. So Intratech first mobilized to site in June 2016, but did not manage to complete all of the works. The contractor even proceeded to mobilize and demobilize a number of uh, uh, times. The pre-commencement works uh, uh, were, however, not completed, and the EPC contract was subsequently terminated as uh, what the uh, council has already alluded to uh, by ZPC as a result of, a, uh, of the lapse of the conditions precedent 
satisfaction period, lapse of the conditions precedent satisfaction period. So the termination of the contract was on account of the lapse of the CP satisfaction period. There is a period that is allowed for us to be able to go through the paces and satisfy conditions precedent so that we can be able to initiate the project. After that, a protracted legal battle with the contractor then ensued and uh, which resulted in the cancellation in 2018. On the 4th of December, 2023, the Supreme Court delivered a judgment on the appeal by ZPC against a high court judgment that had been given earlier, uh, which had found the contract for the development of the 100 megawatt Gwanda solar plant is valid. The contract was declared valid by the Supreme Court, and since then, parties have been engaging on the project in compliance with the Supreme Court uh, ruling. Now, the proposed uh, Gwanda solar site, which site we are at today, uh, is at a farm called Jude's Farm. Uh, this farm is about five kilometers, and the total hectare for this area is about 262 uh, hectares. So basically, this is it in terms of the background on the uh, project. Now, let me uh, walk you through the pre-commencement uh, work scope. Uh, the pre-commencement included the following. Number one, the feasibility studies. Number two, project site commencement works, uh, which means the, the works on this site. And this, si this works included site establishment. And by site establishment, what is included? Uh, basic ablutions, the ablution facilities, communication network, temporary housing, preliminary foundations for the structures, water siting and bow drilling and storage, access roads, ground clearance, uh, uh, which, which the, the ground clearance would mean the, the whole ground on which the solar farm was going to sit needed to be cleared. Uh, this was a very huge bush prior to this visit. Uh, there were a lot of big trees here that were actually fell down. Uh, unfortunately, because of the passage of time, we see that shrubs are beginning to uh, emerge once again. And that will warrant that another site clearance uh, be done. So there was a joint inspection that was carried out between ZPC and Intratech in 2020 to evaluate the status of the pre-commencement works. And uh, quite a number of observations were made during that uh, visit. And I will delve into the status of the uh, pre-commencement works as at that point. Now, uh, as part of the pre-commencement works, I have not uh, included the issue of fencing. I'm sure you have all seen fencing was done uh, on the whole site. Then there is the way leaf clearance, fencing way leaf. It's partially done, not all done. There are sections where the way leaf uh, has been cleared on the fence, uh, more like the fire guard. Then signage, partially done, not completely done. I think as we were coming, we didn't really encounter a, no, a lot of uh, signs. Then quarry site identification and development as part of the pre-commencement works, not done. The contractor was uh, actually sourced for quarry for fence skating as well as for the floors from those uh, uh, office blocks. Then ground clearing, uh, this was uh, done. Uh, I'm sure this is, we're talking about uh, 2016, when the ground was cleared and, uh, because of the passage of time, the shrubs have begun to come out. Then site access road, it was uh, partially done. It was just to open an access road to come to the uh, site offices. Uh, temporary housing and offices. This is what you see here. Unfortunately, uh, because of time as well, I think some of the roofing, roof coverings on the buildings were actually blown away by the wind. Uh, a sign that uh, uh, if a structure remains unmanned for a long time, it becomes exposed to the vagaries of the weather elements. Uh, another key uh, uh, the pre-commencement work which was supposed to be done is the construction of a three-phase 33 kV power line to site. The contractor got a, a, a quotation from ZTTDC, but this work is yet to be done. Then the communication also yet to be done. 
topographical and geotechnical surveys. These have since been done. Feasibility study, this was done and completed. And uh, this was what was supposed to then inform the design in terms of uh, the way that the capacity that was touted as 100 megawatts is realizable on this particular site. And indeed, the feasibility study confirmed that that was doable. Then in terms of the milestones that have been achieved to date on this project, uh, we have got an EIA license or an EIA certificate for the construction of the solar farm at this uh, uh, Gwanda site. Then the feasibility study report, it has been issued. The generation license, it has been issued. The national project status, uh, which gives reprieve on some obligations, particularly tax obligations on the project was also issued. Then some pre-commencement works, as I've already indicated, were also completed. And then ZPC also engaged an engineering consultant, Parsons Brinkerhoff, to assist in terms of uh, the uh, management of the uh, project, as it were. Then as a way forward, as the council has already indicated, we are proceeding in compliance with the, uh, con of the Supreme Court judgment to implement the contract. I think uh, in summary, that is uh, what I have for you, honorable members, I submit. All that I have said was done prior to the judgment, the Supreme Court judgment. As of now, we are still engaging particularly on the, pre on the uh, co fulfillment of the conditions precedent, which council has already alluded to. Okay, uh, like we have indicated, there are what are called conditions precedent before a contract can commence and we need the contractor to fulfill. And one of the critical conditions precedent is financial drawdown or availing of funds without which the contract cannot commence. So those are the stages that we are currently engaging in to try and push to ensure that we actually achieve financial closure. I wouldn't say there is no money. Remember, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a long process for you to be able to secure. I'll give mm -hmm. you an example of the Wange 7 and 8. The Wange 7 and 8 contract was signed in 2014, and the financial closure was achieved much later, I think, four years down the line. So it is a process for you to be able to secure the funding. There are quite a number of steps that you need to go through for you to be able to get money. We are saying, you are saying, uh, this is a farm, or this was a farm. So uh, I'm just concerned, how did you deal with the human life or habitats and uh, also, you know, the wildlife uh, that exists here? And perhaps further to that, just try and educate us about the production of solar panels themselves and their lifespan uh, when uh, we actually agree that this becomes finally the site for, for actually generating uh, power using the, the, the solar panels. Yeah, no, no, let's just have a couple of them, then you answer them. Uh, Honorable Mokos. Thank you so much, Chairman. I heard uh, Engineer Forbes has talked a lot about what was happening in the project. Fine, with the technocrats from ZESA, the engineers and the lawyers, you ended up taking the your contractor to court. Was the lawyer was not there during the time when you were giving him the contract? Honestly speaking. Nine, nine, it's almost nine, nine years, years down the line. How is this project going to take off from the ground? Was there not clause or uh, uh, lawyers who were supposed to be there just to say, this contract? Did you consider maybe, uh, maybe if he, if he fails to take off from the ground, what what was the what was there? What did you consider to give him a contract of this magnitude of money? I wanted you to understand from the technical council, engineers and the lawyers. There was to, supposed to be collateral security. Can we have one meeting, please, honorable? What was the collateral security for this contract? That's what I wanted to understand. Honorable Mapiki? Uh, I think the might have us chairman. But I'm an engineer committee, what kind of work in progress? I'm going to go to the air, it's in the air, it's in progress. Because I think I'm going to go to the air, it's in the air. At the same time, at this point, I cannot make a decision. I have to plan. I need to go. I need to go to the grid. I need to go to the grid. We have to go to the grid. Can I not go to the contractor? 
Sir, Bastaraju, can we do the things we want to see? Bastaraju, we are not seeing any kind of air. Can we do work in progress? Do we not anticipate? Actually, Vapana Magere is going to change his property. Bastaraju, we have Vapana about his school. Besides the contract, we have to plan. Do we not have to go into funds? As soon as we are going to work, we have to make a committee. Kuti pane basa re re akui tu kwa ground. Bwana siku yako tayi tayi sisi tatu yafunga uti shatu wala zinu pana basa nenge ra pa ground. But Paris ni zinu nenge zero zero. Kuna rubo ground lo. Okay. Eh, kuna angu mfunzo ndeo kuchanga. Ndeo kuti process irukui tika i i mimi muruku fara ere ne engagement ya muruku ita na contract ndeo kuchanga. Eh, wechi tu. Ndwe kudai. Ti isusu pa tino pa e, contract ya marita kadai. Tino mbo konsidaire ishu ze performance bonds. Zoguti in the event ya kuti contractor atata gui itabasa. E, tiwe tiri covered. Ti ndona kuti itari se tiwona kutuma ukore mangani. E, ndi mtitari sa mtuona kuti as, as a country e, taruza shakadini. Tichingoti na asi mangwana taindi sana kukoti mangwana tadi. I think pa engagement za murugu ita iko zino. E, ngati ite itichiva, tato ita say tato pieza. Kana contractor asi nga kwa nisiku hafa ila uh, performance bond. Ameno, but makato sungiri rapu. Because according to what uh, you have told us, murugu ti mimi maaku tevira shwa magazi ne kuti mwite se mwite. Meaning to say, they are mati mati tira ofeva, se mazimba points. Imi mi na contractor win. Moita zoe guti basari ende remberi. You know at at least kumbo fara tripana. Kwatru kuva mo ma constituency zavasu kufara ni njia zirui tika pana. So tukuto kumbira guti imi mi as expect. Inge njai contractor win. Moita zuno famba. Mukatara saku famba tise ba kusikanas. Tukuti tangu mira pana zuri kitika ifin pasaid. Meaning to say kuti iye contractor wa chumba kwa rara na iswa kana kwa na mbonzo wa machiti anenga ane mara. Andu fungo kuti angata zokusa no itari mwe basa mchini rambiri. So ndo chikumbiro changu titre wa fever wenye. If Canada zoe kwenye kachemen ameno tayi tasi kuti titeverere nyai. Tisa zoti tuzo itevera after five years. Because at the end of the day chuo na imakuri manga. On the environmental issues, the ASEA Environmental and Social Impact Assessment, it uh, considers all the aspects, the biophysical, the flora and fauna, all things are considered when the ASEA is done. At the time of the assessment, all the things that were here, including structures, were assessed and uh, an appropriate uh, action plan was developed in accordance with the provisions of the EMA Act. So that is why we ended up being given the EMA license. So I can confirm that indeed we followed the due process. Then in terms of the manfake, the life of the, you had said the life of the solar plants. Mm -hmm. so the, panels. the solar panels. The life range is uh, depending sometimes on the manufacturer, but roughly I would say around 20 or so years, mm -hmm. or more 20 to 40 20, years yeah. to 25 years. The life of the solar farm. Uh, disposal is still a subject that is still being discussed. Yeah, uh, apparently, oh. apparently, there are some standing procedures that have to be followed mm -hmm. in in disposal. You you don't just uh, throw them away, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and ordinarily that should also be enshrined in the contract so that you know it's it's not then uh, um, left undone, so to speak. Yeah. But there are so many changes that are taking place. Yes, to the extent that them. even mm -hmm. uh, in other countries they are now starting to recycle them. Yeah. 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 Uh, they were going to be imported. You mentioned that uh, the, the, the contractor had a relationship with Chint. Chint. I had an opportunity to visit Chint sometime this year actually. It's a big player in the in the, in the, in the solar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big player in China. So. Second largest. Yeah. In China. Mm. Chint is it just a supplier or it's also it was, part of the financial? It's a partner. It was a partner to Intratech yeah, on the implementation of this project. So Chint is also failing to find funds. Not really. Remember, we have discussed about the issue of the 
issues that arose during the pre commandment works and the subsequent termination of the contract on NAP. So there was there is a gap uh, that happened between the pre commencement to the actual fulfillment of the conditions precedent. Please the, the, the third the third one I'll give it to council. Okay, um thank you, Chair. Um uh, and the two honorable members who asked the question, I think it was basically asking where the technocrats were in the awarding of this contract, if if I got the question correctly, okay. as well as what was uh, taken into consideration in awarding Intratrek, as well as um uh, also asking if there was any collateral security or performance bonds which were considered in terms of the contract. Yeah, I can confirm that um, the process which led to the awarding of the tender to Intratrek was during the time when we had the State Procurement Board um, that was, uh, which, which has now been succeeded by the, uh, the PRAS. Uh, by PRAS, the Procurement Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe. And uh, I'm sure those who are aware the then Procurement Act uh, placed the responsibility of procurement on the State Procurement Board. As much as the requirement to procure uh, or develop this project was on ZPC, but the consideration of the technical capacity as well as the financial uh, and every other uh, requirement uh, related thereto was thoroughly evaluated to our understanding and uh, are subsequently awarded by the State Procurement Board. So in, in respect of what was then considered, I can confirm that uh, from what we received, we were advised that uh, Intratrek was one of the cheapest bidders compliant to the specifications which were required by, by ZPC at the time. Um, then in terms of any collateral security or pe performance bonds, I can also confirm that the current EPC contract that we have is a requirement for number one, an advance payment guarantee, then secondly, a performance guarantee, then thirdly, a retention in respect of the works that would have been done. So contractually, uh, the agreement is very sound to the extent of protecting the interests um, of, of ZPC as well as uh, the government of Zimbabwe, considering that uh, it is a public entity uh, which holds uh, funds on, on behalf of, um, uh, of, of, of the generality of people. Uh, but, but that being said, I think it's also important to clarify the fact that out of the seven or so years that have lapsed, you will note that the greater portion of the time has been spent at court because the first time that this matter was referred to the High Court uh, was actually in January of 2018, yet the contract had been signed on the 23rd of October 20, uh, 2015. So there were only three years of attempting to implement it, after which ZPC terminated it on grounds that uh, at the time it was considered that the uh, contractor had failed to perform. So perhaps I thought honorable members also would also take into account that the greater portion uh, during which there was no activity at site was really uh, during the pendency of the litigation, uh, initially in the High Court, then to the Supreme Court, then back to the High Court again, and finally uh, in the Supreme Court as of December last year. Um, those are my submissions. As part of the uh, feasibility study, you carry out what is called a grid impact assessment. A grid impact assessment determines uh, the impact that a particular or a new installation or a new development, a power station will have <coughs> on the existing facility and also advises on the additional uh, facilities that are required to ensure that when you then connect that facility to the grid, it will not destabilize the stability of the network. So in case in, in this case, a grid impact assessment was carried out and it actually advised that there is a 132 kV substation near here, here in Gwanda, which was said to be the connection point for this solar farm. And in terms of the scope and also the funding, it will be included under the EPC contract or the funding that will be secured for implementation of the project. So there will be a transmission line to that substation and additional work will also happen in the uh, substation to accommodate the uh, transmission line.
Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe I can just add that in answer to uh, Honorable Mapiki, who was saying ZDC, why are you not building the line? There is no way ZDC can start building that line until the full package of the contract has been uh, approved and availed. Right? It's not like we, we, people just get money from, from somewhere and then start to do a project as it were. You want that full package. Because what will happen in case you put a line here, in case you wanted surplus money, you put a line here that goes to, to the 132 kV substation, and then you don't get enough money for the actual power plant. It will be a waste of resources. So we're going to do things meticulously without having to rush, so to speak. Then the issue about uh, are we happy with the engagement? After uh, this, we've yes. Um, as far as I'm concerned, my measure of uh, being happy or otherwise of an engagement is, is, is that engagement two-way. I can say and confirm that the engagement right now is two-way. If there are issues that we, after the judgment, we have written to them, they have written to us, we are, in the, we are at the point of clarifying a lot of issues. Because we're talking of a project that uh, whose contract was signed in 2015. And we also have to conform to the judgment from the Supreme Court. So it's not like uh, from December, people should have actually started seeing things flying here. It doesn't work like that. We have to be very meticulous. I'm glad that you are talking about, uh, do we have um, performance bond in the contract? You know, all those issues, we really need to look at them. And you know, technology is changing also. I don't want to go into detail, but technology has changed from 2015. You know, these are issues that we, we then have to, to discuss. Okay. So I think th that's all I can say. I can say so far, to, the engagement is okay. Short for us, mm. what is the timeline in terms of uh, when should you end the negotiation that you're having with the contract? So that we tie up uh, the discussions, have a tidy contract mm -hmm. that has timelines, etc. Et what yeah, yeah on, on, on Honorable, that is a very, very important question. But you know, it takes two to tango. Um, what I can say is that uh, both the contractor and ourselves are very uh, oblivious to the fact that this nation is actually reeling under uh, power outages to the extent that if it were possible to commission this plan yesterday, we should do it yesterday. I can't give you a, a timeline right now as you speak. Some of these issues that you are talking about, some of the issues that we want to, uh, to advance, we are actually discussing with the contractors so that they can be time tagged. Then, when each and every activity which is supposed to be done a, as part of the pre convention works is time tagged, we can then be able to, to say this is, this is our roadmap and we'll be able to achieve this deliverable by this day. I think it's information that we can give you as soon as we have sanitized the engagement that is currently taking place. Thank you. I think we can think about it. I think we Tukufana kuziwa kuti uh, uh, contract ma, ma rara kamira se, ma condense. Because imi kana maka pamu no contract, two, three years down the line, moment sa kukot, kurawat panet bridge. Pama inda kukot, mai besa ni close ipi. Ndo pa mbobu nzwa pa kutanga kuti legal department renyu. Re recombite in the areas kuti because kana mchita agreement mnofano ita agreement ino 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 protect hai saka I want to believe kuti by the time ya maka approach a court manga mchifungi zira mimi kuti contractor ata zabas dova mainda wa court first question secondly eh, maka inda wa court dova magic yo eh, tuda kuziwa kuti order yaka yama yaka yaka budi swa cream coat iri kuti kudini because everything is ku vunzwa pano rudzo kuti we are now guided nechi ne order ya supreme court so i want to know kuti order ya supreme court iri kuti kudini as as members of parliament kuti nyatso kuziva kuti tikwanze kuona kuti okay kana tichi guide ana to guide ana tichi kudini because apachina kwati chakwanisa kuenda supreme court ndiro da rekupedzisira saka atichakwanisi kuita against chi the Supreme Court. Tau kwanza wu tichi farm, but you not, okay, Supreme Court, you not good in. But pa contract chatu la kuzi, chatu kunya kuda pa contract chepe chepe. Ndi chepe kuti, eh, initially, ui contract maka uirana kuti, urukumpa mari kuti atangi sechi nyi, bas. Then, because chine tichu, toda kunzuwa shi vwa kwa mori, because chatu nombo uirenga omu ma newspaper, ni chichi, pari bahita so kutipaka buda mari no shikachi, 5 million. Sato zoti, 5 million yacho ya yendra na yereni pa stage, pata, pata according to the contract. Thank you.
Okay. Honorable okay. Brown will over here the, the supplementary, yeah. but please make it brief. Okay. In the Nuvons, Uncle Wakuetera, and where Wakuti, a Mati Imimi, a Makan's contract irrevalid. Meaning to say, Teacher would deal on a contract Yenya Makawirana, Pamakatanga. Because you know, good Titi Susu Pane Zimwez are Murkuita, Muchita, good. I order yeku yeku supreme court yiru kuku vumira yere kuti muite ma alterations kana kuti i zamagui ita engagement yenyu na contractor ende zeku pe zisira na chikumbwa kuti tini zeku kuti ma targets eny pakuta ora na kwenye muta risira kuti in three months in two years in six years because remember tini seven years zagato kufura so we are worried nine nine we are worried thank you. Yeah. Every every MP wants to talk, so we we'll allow one, two, three, four. Wangu mpunzo rukuti. Matano technology ya chinja. Muna maka contractor wa 2015. Akanga ali 2015 compliant. But technology ya usika pa 2030. Uyi muna ali pa 2030 compliant yezi. Because anu kuna usuti, ah no. Technology ya taka itama zuwae. Those are nice zero. But it's new one is a chinja isu. And she has a Because I'm about 2015 compliant technology. I change it. I'm about 2040. I'm about 2040. But I'm about 2015. My adjustments are much tighter. They have been doing the contract. They Next one's the Honorable Chalk. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to management. Yes, yes. Issue is upon up and they would imimin a contractor Muchirku with an eye. Or it was him by Jenny Magutung, Shanda Mutever as I know than put the Yavania court. Was the Mimi pressure a Mosisina Yogumupa because Mauka had one court. Sarah was not even the Rudicher Agat as the Mufuti twenty years as na quit. A Muna pressure, I'm no Mupa, no Guti Magasunga Nichi, the contractor Magasa and in a nearly cage, Yaga opens a cupping in the red and out and who swive to court. Was my baby Muda when I ate thirty two million foot in Sakaro? Saga will know the Muji soon as Amzor Mogona grow of the name of the Bamzor. And what? Saga. It's okay. So, those Mosesuns attend that with the Canazunis Canazunis, I got that room which we read. That it is, you know, when you the project, the Yakanaka, you know, but Sirani Capania, the market. The most important thing, then I would, we ran a contractor, how we are at a bus. One way to Muna Manuchema. She knows the best that you saw the way And the Saga, the most important thing we read and I, but I can say, Fan Baban, we only back one bar gateway. Media Mutia Cle, where I sumuka foot. Post of Daffy, my mad foot, your goodies were clear about money. You are not Zimbabwe, the good time at Tonga, one Amatanga. It's not fair. It's not fair. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. e, in Rukuti contract here, Makasen and Angaria 2015. At this Uti Angar Samu for how much? Ruling a Supreme Court, ya kuti contract is valid. It is valid by price. Yo ya area makanga within 2015. Kana kuti ya shanduka. Tova ipapo. E, Tukuti sus. Project yenye. Yanga yaka nakacha isu. As in the chona zilipa ground at the moment. Imimi ZPC. Dimima atu wane pressure than the contractor. Contractor aluto ita reluctant kuti. He can take even it. 50 is. Mm. But in your story, me wrote you to Chamama Gates. Saka, Supreme Court, if on a coupe, get like a good mimic engagement, the Enya Murkita, a my guru, a my nini, cana matters a guirana, Munufana Guzum Gurambana, Muswa Cat, Nutana, cana Chirukumba, Munupo, and Wagons, ah, Madame Squirana, eh, Chimbo, it had two years in Michimbo negotiate. As can as a ramba, Chuya move what accounts are Muchat. Saka by mimi engagement yenu, ichati to rangua yaka dini ne na 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 contractor. Thank you. Honorable. Yeah, inim vunzo wangu ripa kuti eh se 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 wano wakasena na contract na contract. Apana zamu ruku daire kuba kwati ma honorable members yese portfolio committee on energy. Because pana zamu ruku ti muno duduza contractors yezoto ruku ti susu avane apa end. Sapa ne pukuti mimi mwenye magasungwa maoko, 
Because she knew she was not this, I am not going to put a rush into the solution. I'm not going to sanitize it. Messi, I can't take a panna, I was a monoda of a committee energy. Put it back to run a name, I'm singing a quantity to speak. Did she have any mutation? Okay, uh, we will give you a chance to answer. Uh, Pamuruku answer in terms of price up. Contract here do is it a remeasurable contract? Is it a contract here? Could at the stage, I know Sikakuzu Budani final BOQ. You remeasure your quantities and come up with the final price or the ballpark figure that was given before designs is all dispensable to the contract. And, and uh, honorable MPs for, for the uh, thought provoking questions. Um, I think they are very, very important questions mm. Mm. Uh, which you raise because they are quite critical for the success of this project. Um, I, I will respond to the supplementary questions relating to the contract. Then uh, I'm sure my colleagues will also assist as well as the MD uh, to respond to the other questions. I'll begin with the question on uh, the contents of the contract uh, and whether on what basis we were um, arguing in court on as well as the role of the legal department. Uh, I'm an interested party so I may not fully answer to the question on competence of those who are in the legal department which I had but uh, I'm sure from my answer you'll be able to uh, determine that uh, for yourself. I think the other questions were more or less related to the issue of the contract, the contractual clauses and whether what we are discussing now is contemplated or allowed for in terms of the Supreme Court uh, judgment. So I'll try to be very brief. The nature of our contract which is an engineering procurement and construction contract, is such that there are suspensive clauses, which for, uh, maybe to give an analogy, you can be given a, a, a particular agreement or a lease agreement, for instance, but in order for the lease agreement to come into effect, you must pay a deposit. So the payment of the deposit becomes the suspensive condition in order for the lease agreement to become effective. So it's more or less the same. In order for commencement of works to start, which is the actual construction to start, there were certain conditions precedent or suspensive conditions, about six or eight of them, which were supposed to be fulfilled. Now the contract provides that these were supposed to be fulfilled within 24 months from the date of signature which meant that by the 23rd of April um, 2017, these conditions precedent should have been fulfilled. But the contract further allowed for an extension by six months of this period in the event that uh, parties have failed to complete uh, the, the conditions precedent. So effectively, the contract gave a period of 30 months within which the conditions precedent were to be satisfied. Now. Some of these were fulfilled, as Engineer Chanakira has referred to earlier on, um, and I will not uh, uh, belabor the committee in restating them. But the biggest elephant in the room has always been the issue of funding. So you will appreciate that uh, during the period uh, from 2015 when the contract was signed, there were a number of changes uh, within the uh, monetary uh, policies and so forth and so on. Uh, and to the extent that uh, Zimbabwe uh, or the Zimbabwean government was obliged to make certain payments um, to what is known as Sinoshore, which is an export credit uh, reinsurance firm of China Exim Bank um, uh, of, of China. And at the time that the award was award, or the tender was awarded to Intratrek, the basis of funding was supposed to uh, be from China Exim Bank. So the 24 months lapsed whilst the funding could not come through from China Exim Bank because there was a view that uh, there were certain payments which were not uh, made to sign ashore. So basically that was the excuse by the contractor to then say, as far as I'm concerned, I've given you a, a, a financier who is willing and ready to finance. But the financier is saying you have not yet paid my reinsurance to the sign uh, ashore export credit agency. So that then delayed. But after the 30 months lapsed, that became the basis 
for ZPC to then terminate the contract because the argument was to say you are the EPC contractor who is bound in terms of the contract to secure funding. So that was the legal basis we, co we, we considered to terminate. And I may also want to clarify that ZPC was not the first one to approach the High Court. All that ZPC did was to cancel the contract on the 23rd of April 2018 on the basis that I've articulated earlier on. And it was now Intratrek that approached the High Court in 2019, alleging that we had unlawfully terminated the contract. That is uh, what then uh, led to the onset of the protracted uh, legal battle as we have come uh, to know of it. Um, then um, I'll also touch on... Before you go on the second issue. Yes, Chairman. The money that was supposed to be paid to the reinsurer, was it specifically related to this project or it had uh, other issues to do with other commitments that the government had? Um, th thank you for that question. So, so the nature of um, this government-to-government or what they call uh, cross-border financing instruments are such that all the projects which are being developed by government will be covered by a particular facility and the amount towards which um, the government should pay the export credit uh, reinsurer simply considers all the projects that government will be developing on the basis of financing from, from China Exim Bank. So it was not directly related to this project, but uh, in relation to other projects which uh, government was developing at the time. Yeah, then I'll just quickly uh, touch on the contents of the Supreme Court order. So basically, the Supreme Court order found that, um, well, it's, it's more of a, a very legal and technical argument, uh, which uh, the three-member bench of the Supreme Court um, concurred and found in favor of Intratrek. But basically, the Supreme Court judgment, which is now public record, provides that number one to the extent that ZPC is a government-owned entity and it is government which probably delayed in making payment to Sinoshore, Intratrek as a private entity could not be held accountable for the delays in financial closure. So it then reasoned that on that basis, uh, there is a concept in law what, of what is known as fictional fulfillment or what is uh, known as a waiver of rights. The Supreme Court then ruled that by such delays happening, then ZPC waived the right to cancel the contract within 30 days. And that is the basis upon which the cancellation was set aside. Then in respect of the uh, pre-commencement works, which was another basis uh, upon which ZPC had cancelled the contract, um, there was an issue of an amendment which happened to the contract extending the CP satisfaction period. And the Supreme Court reasoned that by virtue of extending the CP satisfaction period through an amendment, then it also, or rather basing on the contents of such amendment, it then reasoned uh, that uh, there was an aspect of fictional fulfillment or to the extent that uh, the contractor was deemed to have performed uh, its obligations at law. So basically that was the reasoning of the uh, Supreme Court, which I agree is very legalistic. But uh, should this honorable committee so request, we shall be uh, very much ready to avail a copy of the Supreme Court judgment, uh, quite detailed, about 45 pages. But I'm sure you can really follow the reasoning of the Supreme Court in, in that judgment. Then lastly, uh, the question raised by the honorable member that um, are our current engagements in accordance with the Supreme Court, um, to the extent that the Supreme Court judgment held the contract valid, any engagement should be in accordance with the contract. So the contract itself provides that uh, the contract or the substance thereof can be amended or varied subject to both parties mutually agreeing to it and thereafter reducing into writing. So the current engagements are within the scope and contemplated by the contract and if any resultant amendment is to take place that is with respect to the time frames, with respect to the technology, with respect to the contract price. All that will be done within the confines and ambit of the contract, uh, which fully provides for that. Uh, those will be my responses from the contractual and legal side of things. Uh, with your indulgence, I'll invite um, 
engineer Chanakira to address issues on changes in technology and the extent to which the current contract uh, will deal with the, uh, the technological changes. I think you have already dealt with it, is it? As yeah. part of the issues that are also provided for in the contract. I think obviously because of the passage of time, technology is also evolving. And likewise, the costs are also changing. So obviously, in terms of the issues that we are engaging on, that will naturally be part of issues that we will also deliberate on to find a way of uh, also incorporating the changes that are happening in terms of the technology globally. So basically, yes, the changes in technology will be considered during the deliberations. Then I will also uh, respond to whether the chairman's question on whether it's an ad measurement or a fixed price contract. It being an EPC contract is a fixed price contract. It's not a measurement contract. In terms of uh, reasonableness of the rates, uh, a due diligence exercise was carried out prior to the award to evaluate the reasonableness of the price at the time of contract signing. That is in 2015. So line by line item, you are not interested? We do that when we do evaluation. Remember, we do... But that's prior to design. Yes, that's prior to design. Remember, the EPC is a contractor take all risk type of contract. It's already included. Yes, yes. The contractor is already taking a risk in giving a price before the design is completed. The question was how then can you alter the prices when you have already, uh, he has already taken the risk and he did that in 2015? They are clauses within the contract that allows for us to discuss about possible changes. Remember, in any contract, there are provisions that allows for you to be able to discuss changes that happens uh, to the price. Subject to use by if there is a deadlock, there is nothing to do. Obviously, that is subject to discussion. That is why we said we are engaging to find each other pertaining to the issues surrounding various issues on the contract, including technology, cost, and so many other issues uh, attendant to it. In Panama changes, that means there will be a variation. How many, how, how much in terms of percentage? The percentage variation is 100 million. As Shami said, I would doubt that 300. According to the laws, and often also adjust to how much. Thank you. And Chair Panda Sugar and Guachiti, Imimini Massimba, and you say Paramid Mogola Samona contract. That on this route one hour, Wanga, what shall we dance with Tauran and Ganoida Kuita by a paramid? Because this is going to turn the Mimin to me, Munomasimba, Saga Mimito, Samona contract. At the same time, throughout this is by the Tangi. This is our tower is watch a tower of our pap through. We wanted to find out, um, I think the burning issue here, uh, Zesa, is how much was paid to Intratech for the pre-commencement of works. We want that figure. And um, have you been following up on this project for the past, um, let's say for the first three years? You say there was uh, some, some clearing that was done. To some of us, it doesn't look like uh, much was done. If there are any uh, visits or whatever um, uh, inspections that you were doing during the first three years that you were in agreement, can we have also proof of that in reports and in pictures when you bring the, the contract that requested uh, to Parliament later on? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Then uh, when you are doing your legal wrangles for the last seven years, What's the effect of that in terms of costs? There was standing time, obviously, and the contractor won his case in court. Will he not come for compensation for the time that was lost? It means that tanga foot you could contract it, see. Ah, we as we talk about rats and cockai. I mean, no, can I talk to our Rana Queen? You could see, mucha wave Rana here. Can I mucha it? I say, who funds our country? We are trying to understand. 
kuti project ino iende remberi ibatsire nyika because atinga ramberi chiti for the past 9 years e tukumirira kuti magetsa ende kuvanhu vanhu vakutona kunge hapana zvatukuita kwete mime meka ne so ma MPs because vanenge vachivudza ko imurumbo itei tango uya pana pa tadzokera tozodzoka futa after 5 years tongota ah, we are still engaging that's why i was uh, i said please at least if you give us uh, some time to say we are anticipating by such a time tinogona kunge tapedza kutaura na kwedu taonesana to ita sei kuti mari yamaka yamaka tora shoma yacho yamaka badara yanga ine grace period ipi uye interest yacho pachezvayo e yakamira sei pana patakambonzwa pango ma social media kuti panga pane political interference but chirungu chacho takasimba chingochitera kuti political interference so for for the record the original contract price uh, at which the EPC contract was signed for in 2015 uh, I think as earlier on referred to by engineer Chanakira was at 172 million uh, 800,000 USD um, but I think it is now common cause that globally the cost of solar equipment uh, is drastically uh, plummeted to the extent that even the contractor himself has placed it on record acknowledging the fact that the global solar prices have fallen down and it is also on record that he has actually offered um, close to 20 or 30 percent uh, a discount on the original price um, in recognition of the fact that the original contract price uh, may no longer be uh, sustainable or rather to ZPC there might no re be realization of value for money if we are to proceed at that at that price so in as much as the supreme court judgment is very clear that the contract which is valid and extant is the 2015 one which refers to 172 million the reason and rationale for our engagement currently is to try and go around and deliberate uh, on the on, on various issues, which also include the contract price. Uh, and uh, the latest indications we are getting is that um, the contractor is also quite amenable to the idea of uh, uh, such price reduction because it is a, a practical uh, issue which uh, uh, no one can, can technically run away from. So it, it is a subject of the discussions that are ongoing and we are hopeful that uh, we will agree on a price uh, that that is reasonable, that is practicable in the circumstances, and overall that will give value for money uh, to to the government. Um, I also attempt to respond to the question on whether there has been any claim for compensation and um, uh, any 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 claim on the time lost during uh, litigation. Um, as of now, we have not received any claim for compensation. Uh, from the contractor, the only thing that we have received is a claim for the legal costs that he has incurred. Um, but however, uh, the position that has been taken is that the both the High Court and the Supreme Court did not order uh, costs on the higher scale that is being claimed, and uh, we have not received any further claims on that basis. So we are quite confident that the, with respect to uh, costs of suit, uh, we shall not uh, uh, really extend further that, that discussion as we believe that uh, our response to the contractor was quite informative uh, and correct to that extent. Um, then... Um, Sorry, you mentioned that the problem with the fees that they are at a higher scale or we are not supposed to be going for them. Uh, in two instances, we were not, there was no order as to cost. So there are no legal costs that are going to be paid? There is only one case, which was the High Court uh, matter, which ordered costs, but on the ordinary scale. And uh, ordinarily, that, that amount, uh, as of today, is close to being negligible. But in any case, ZPC also won the Supreme Court case in 2020, which also ordered costs against the contractor. So at the end of the day, we are likely to set off uh, in terms of... Uh, in terms of those costs. So we don't stand to suffer much uh, financial prejudice um, on, on that basis. Um, perhaps uh, Engineer Chanakira can articulate uh, 
the issues on the amount paid towards the pre-commencement works, I think mm. he had referred to it. In, yeah. uh, you've been sketching the issue of, uh, it's been more than two hours. Uh, is there a timeline to your negotiation? You can't go away from this place without knowing. They should, even if you, you don't agree with it, mm -hmm. Right. With the contractor, at least within yeah, your organization, you should know that the negotiation to the end by this day. Uh, they are still answering the question. Ah, okay. No, that's why I know we are giving you a further opportunity to pose questions. <laughs> um, Chair. Um, the, the best I could answer to the issue of timeline is the fact that currently the parties have not yet uh, concretized a particular date at which the negotiations must be concluded. And it is for basically two reasons. The first reason is that the only basis upon which you can come up with a practical figure is when you are in agreement in terms of the uh, financing of the project. And as of now, there are various options which have been given to ZPC. There has been a term sheet that has been given to ZPC, uh, which unfortunately at this stage I may not be qualified to really disclose. But all those considerations will then indicate to us what extent of time uh, that it can take to close. But that being said, Chairman, uh, I would like to... Um, worst case scenario. Give us the worst case scenario. With all, all factors... <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I may have to lean on the, the advice of my MD uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm only a, a legal person. There is obviously a review, an extensive review of the uh, technical issues as well as financial, which I may not be able to competently respond to at this stage. But I think from a policy point of view, I don't know MD, if, uh, yeah, it's, it's not an easy one, honourable, because you see there are so many players that uh, should be taken into account in terms of... When do you want us to complete it? To complete the project? No. Uh, yeah. the, the, the negotiation... Yeah, may, maybe, so maybe I'll give it uh, not more than six months from now, at best. So, 1 January 2025? At best, yeah. Best or worst? At best. So it could be 2030, 2040. Yeah, you, you heard what he said about uh, Wangasen and Eight, where there were no issues like the, like the one that we have. You understand? Which, which took some years. You see, because, because the money, you, you know what, if we had money as ZPC, which we can then use to, to fund this project, it would be a different dimension altogether. But we're actually going to borrow money together with the EPC contract. You understand? But, so, so the other players, you know, financial institutions, you know, this and that. We, we, so, we, we, this is not the first project you are tying up. Yeah. Or is this a group? Projects are coming and going. Yes. Uh, in this particular instance, whose burden is it to look for the money? Is it ZPC or is it the contract? Okay, let, let, let me assist in responding then. The nature of our contract <laughs> is such that. The EPC contractor sources the funds, mm. but ZPC borrows. Underwrites, yeah. Mm. So he's a facilitator in terms of funds. Precisely. Mm. So After he, facilitating, he does the actual work. Yes. So whilst it is not an EPC plus F proper, but the EPC contractor identifies, he sources and identifies a potential financier. Then the financier would submit a term sheet to ZPC the terms of which will be evaluated, reviewed, mm -hmm. then if acceptable, we obviously in terms of uh, the Public Finance Management Act, have to escalate and seek for a borrowing certificate from the Ministry of, of Finance. Then it's only on that basis that ZPC can then borrow the funds in its own name and capacity, which funds will be used to pay the EPC contract. From your wisdom, why didn't we just simply look for an IP fee? Well, uh, obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, we could have been much wiser. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, this is the situation we find ourselves in. And uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to wriggle out. We can only at best manage uh, the situation as it is. Mm. Mm.
Yakutukuti muzonza imimi enda yuko. Wanga watu na ututi imimi pano shukukure merai. Yende mwada sama kamba ni akaisu wako anda mutapa. Imimi ni ana rasete. Mwada sama performance yacho. Yanga yaka ishirakizu watu wakure merwa. Saka mutapa investment. Iliku kubatira ipane zipi in terms of this project. Yeah, what I can say on that is that uh, indeed they are the new shareholder. And uh, we actually, all these engagements that we're talking about, we're also engaging with them so that they can also assist to provide direction and also to to help us to make sure that uh, we can then be able to to make sure that all the deliverables that we want uh, are, are put in place. So they are a serious engagement that are taking place with the shareholder in this particular case. When you what? said you would share with us the contract, etc. Et yeah, essentially uh, it covered the feasibility study and so it also covered the pre-commencement uh, works. The documentation we asked for, did you get it before? The feasibility study was uh, 2.1 and all other costs was 2.8 million. Then the reminder is the VAT. You can still share that documentation with all these two shareholders. Can we have it by Friday? John, 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 are you still in good books with the contractor? I thought I had also responded to this to say this. I mean, from, from when this Supreme Court judgment was made, uh, the two parties are very keen to make sure that uh, uh, we set the ball rolling in terms of uh, delivering the project to the extent that we have been uh, engaging and we are still engaging. Um, hopefully we will be able to conclude all the issues uh, that uh, are still outstanding very soon. Then on, uh, on now, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Energy can assist on the project. We are very clear in terms of your oversight role as Parliament, not only in the energy sector, but in all other sectors. And I'm glad to say that you are talking to us today, and you are also expressing your, uh, your concerns in terms of how long this project has taken uh, to be completed. We have lost seven years. And we believe that uh, you can do the same with other Know, parties to this deal, sensitize them the same way that you have done to us. That will be part of your uh, oversight role, I believe, so that uh, everyone can then be very clear that we need to make sure that we don't continue to hold the country to ransom by getting this project to remain where it is today, where bushes that were cleared have now overgrown. So that is what we expect from you, um, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, political political uh, political uh, Chidauti ito ya regalo, tukune imwe project mwenye kafuti ya makapa same kamban. Thank you, honorable member. Um, yes, I can confirm that uh, Intratrek was a local partner to an entity which wanted to develop the Harare repowering project um, as well as the Gairezi uh, 30 megawatts uh, hydro project. Uh, but both contracts have since been terminated. Uh, since the main contractors in those uh, uh, two projects confirmed that they, they no longer had access to the funding which they had contemplated uh, originally. So we, we no longer have any other project uh, other than the Gwanda Solar project. No. This one is the Gwanda Solar project. The other two, the same reasons that prevail on the third one, are the same reasons why this one is not finished? Um, well, the structure is a bit different. Was for the other two, uh, there was no requirement, or rather, I can, there are two uh, very substantial material differences. Uh, differences in terms of the contractor being involved. The EPC contractor for Harare Repowering and Kairesi Hydro Power Project was not Intratrick. Intratrick was only a local partner. 
So the two EPC contractors were very candid and they came out in the open to say we have failed to secure funding and they actually agreed to mutually terminating the contract. So it comes to the contract? Yes. Indeed. Mm. Yeah. I know for those I can, I can confirm uh, with, with no fear of contradiction that they have been uh, cancelled and they, they are not being pursued. Well, in substance, they are almost similar. But obviously, when you look at this project, it's a solar project, uh, Gairez is a hydropower project. So in terms of the technical detail of it, it will be materially different. But in terms of financial structuring, it will be more or less the same because they, are, they were all EPC contracts. Okay. We are not convinced why the two should be different in terms of if the financing is the same. And the other ones, they are clearly saying they can't find funding and it can be closed. Then this one. Yeah, Chairman, like, like I was trying to like I was trying to explain, for the other two contracts, they are different financing partners. Uh, but, uh, it's just change of character. The difference there is change of character. On the two, the main contractor was not interested. Mm. On this one, mm. the main contractor is interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. yeah. With the obligation to look for company. Indeed. Indeed. So, basically, like I earlier articulated, Chair and uh, Honorable Members, for the two contracts which I referred to for Harari Repowering and Gairez, the main EPC contract was not intratrack. And intratrack did not have an obligation to secure funding under those two contracts. And it explains probably the reason why these other uh, contractors acknowledged the fact that they didn't have capacity or their financiers uh, no longer had the capacity to fund. Yet in this case, Intratrack had the obligation to secure funding, which was secured initially through China Exim Bank, but for the reasons which I articulated later on in terms of Sinoshua and so forth. That is what sort of uh, set this project apart because the financier had confirmed capacity to fund, but then there were now these issues of... Next the, question. Uh, it was, was it secured or the intent to fund was given? Yeah, certainly. It's just an intent. Yes. Not the funding. The funding was never secured. Sure. Why did you lie? Amagashins or Kamaga Samona go parliament. Kuti Pana Baton Mike did this and good to a I'm not moving from Fuzo. Of Zona Mapi. Yeah, um, through you, Honorable. I was one of the attendees uh, at that uh, um, meeting, and we never said that uh, there were activities taking place here. You remember, we, we when we say those things, we, we would have, I mean, would have uh, sworn and uh, taken an oath, you know. So surely we can't, we can't lie to that extent. Okay, at, yeah. at the moment, who is responsible for all the activities here? Is it you or the contract? I know. The, well, we are, we are keeping here. We are keeping this place in terms of security. Isn't it? So yeah, security that is keeping this place. Who built that toilet? It's ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. So did you have one of one of one those were debate. Was against over Naguani, she choked the chest with the background. And one. So, Mugo Amijin, the Shagatu, and I do, we are now so good at two and a half that to a defend and no better. The other two pass out with family. Thank you so much. Uh, your the documentation we asked for in April, we still need it. It will be part of our report that we are going to present in Parliament. So, please honor our request.